okay by popular demand I'm taking a video of my boat Unfortunately, the camera on this iPad doesn't do wider shots in video, so I'm gonna have to deal with unnecessarily zoomed in uh, viewing angles. It's as zoomed out as possible. Anyway, so this is purpose, and this is a Watkins 27. From 1983. Uh, I bought it in December 2020 and brought it to here, Middle River, Maryland, in 2021, February 2021 specifically. Uh, she's 27 feet long, 10 feet wide, or 10 foot deep. Up, air draft. Come on, zoom in. Uh, regular sloop rig. So, so two sails primarily, main sail uh, bundled up there under the cover, and the uh, jib rolled up on the around the foil on the. Uh, stay. Now the mass is roughly 36 feet, 36 feet long. Uh, let's get a little bit closer here. That's the shore power connection. As you see here, it's a uh, wheel uh, steering. Pedestal. Uh, do you have anybody here who has a tiller? No. So, I don't have anybody nearby with tillers. Um, but, yeah, this cockpit. That there is the panel for the engine. And that's where I will put the key. And press the button to start it. That little thingy at the bottom is the uh, shutdown. Uh, plunger. I pull it and it shuts out the engine. Bunch of winches that are very old. They work. Most of them. Uh, six port lights, windows, what they call them. Uh, let's get a pull. Yep. Okay, one sec. Okay, now I'm safely aboard. It's a four hatch that I replaced recently. Uh, up here, four deck. Uh, there's no, no anchor locker, so no space to hide away the anchor. But there is a roller up front. Uh, on the basket, doesn't do much other than hold the anchor in place, and the pulpit with the nav light in front. Um, Lifelines here, uh, Dyneema. I, re I replaced them last year. They used to be stainless steel that corroded because they were covered. I'm getting cold. Okay, back. Sorry about the phone call. Okay, this thing here is a solar vent. Um, so, sun shines on it, and when it senses that it's getting hot, it starts a motor and blows hot air. Um, provided that there's hot air below. That's actually down in the restroom. I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, the hatch goes down to the I'll show you that shortly as well. Uh, 
last step. And, uh, the companionway with the washboards that closed it up. Alright, let's get back here to the cockpit. Okay. These guys here, these are for storage. This port side locker uh, is just for storing random crap. Um, those are screens and spare uh, um, window glass. It's actually plastic, but um, I should put them inside in the cabin. You, you put uh, actual things that are needed for sailing in here and gas for the um, for the grill that will go here on the railing but I had since I uh, okay and that there is a manual bilge pump that hatch there goes to the emergency tiller attachment the emergency tiller is in the locker that I just closed. Uh, let's go around here. Okay, the steering wheel. Uh, this is for the uh, autopilot, which I'll show in a bit. Um, so it's got a little motor back here, this guy, and the clutch. Where's the clutch? Come here. Ah, oh, here we go. So, this guy. So, when I turn on the autopilot and engage it, I need to lower this. And the motor is engaged and it can turn the steering. Right now it's locked because the motor is not turning. But if I let go, then I can turn. Um, compass is here. Ta da! A compass. These things are expensive. It's like three or five hundred dollars. Kind of. uh, that's the throttle lever. So zoom, zoom. No zoom, zoom. And then uh, gearbox selector. This forward, neutral, reverse, back to neutral. Um, this here is a thingamabob. Oh, yeah. Is supposed to be a faucet. There's supposed to be a handle to spray stuff with. Mm. One of the many things that need to be fixed. Close again. All right. So this here, and uh, open up. So you got fenders, wood battery charger that black and yellow thing two batteries uh, they're pretty big and a rat nest of wires it's pretty scary actually anyway close up all right sliding over so here is one of the new things that I put on that's the autopilot control head. So when it's turned on, it will display the heading, uh, speed, uh, some other information. And when I want it to start controlling the boat, I just go pop and uh, it will uh, steer towards that heading. Uh, and then I can use these to change the heading without having to touch the wheel. And then when you want to cancel, press this one. Um, it's pretty speedy. Uh, then over here on the other side is the display. Come on, ah, come on. This is for um, swap. Ray Marine calls a tri-data. So it displays depth, speed, 
and uh, distance, what they call the log, uh, or trip. It's like an odometer for boats. Uh, this is actually simpler than the other one, the autopilot control head, because this is LCD. The other one is uh, like th this is like classic LCD with uh, seven segment digits. The other one is more like a fully graphical display. Cover that and let's go down below. Okay, now we're down below in the cabin. So this is the view from inside, looking at the cockpit. And we turn around here and hope that, the, yeah, there you go, camera is adjusting its eye. All right, so here we have so this is the galley uh, so right now I just have a mess um, that's the electric panel right there a bucket of damper it to keep the moisture level down a mess of things this is Dyneema rope and also Dyneema rope but different size this is I think it's, this is half inch or three eighths something like that and this is quarter inch still pretty strong there's like breaking load of like 3,000 pounds it's stupid stuff it's very very strong so let's get this out of the way uh, oh that thing that is the winch handle so, so I got this little lever here you see this uh, so it says like the double square and a double and a single square latch and you push this and it lines up so you can put it on a, on a winch release it and then it doesn't come off and then you go with the handle spinny side you turn it and uh, pull the rope like that Chip brush is this one is oh no that's actually this is actually good still I used it for boiling teak this thing that looks like a cutting board actually it's a cutting board so but it hides the stove this is an an alcohol stove so you open this and put um, alcohol uh, can be bought at like Home Depot or Lowe's um, one will buy the denatured alcohol uh, and then pour it down here um, on. Uh, there we go uh, then we'll pump it here build up uh, pressure and then there's supposed to be a dial here but it's actually because it's it's supposed to be like a full circle but it's turned way too far and it's way down in there so I actually need to pull this off I'm gonna screw it from here from every corner lift it up and adjust those um, knobs out of there. Come on, move. Uh, then one will open it and light it. It, it will fill this bowl here. That's uh, uh, the alcohol. So uh, it will come out as a liquid. Fill the bowl here. So one closes it, then lights it up, fire, and it will heat up the burner. Once it's hot, then when you open up again here it, the heat vaporizes the alcohol and then the it's the vapor that burns and then it works kind of like a propane stove but uh, it's lower heat because the alcohol doesn't have as much uh, um, energy to burn uh, but it's safer because if there is an alcohol fire, you can just use water to put it out. And guess 
guess what's in abundance in your boats? Yeah, not propane, water. All right, so the towel cover that I cannot use when I'm taking the video, put it away. Bunch of crap. Uh, oh, the sink. Yeah, so the sink, uh, it's just a regular sink, just smaller. Stainless steel. Uh, got the pretty standard faucet. Uh, this might be a marine version of it, of the regular stuff that you buy at Home Depot. Uh, it's probably as old as a boat. And then it drains down here and so right now that's that valve is closed so if i open it then i can drain stuff from the sink and it goes out into the water that's one of the through holes uh, that's where the speed uh, sensor will go there's a plunger for when stuff gets clogged and stuff all right uh, other things. Oh, so it's back there. That's the back side of the autopilot control head. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna pull this out from this side and put this here. Come on. There you go. This comes off. That's the ladder for the companionway. Uh, this panel comes off, and voila, the engine. This is a two-cylinder Yanmar 2GM diesel. Uh, it's about half a liter of displacement. Uh, makes about 13 horsepower at 3600 RPM. 3400 according to the label. So it's not a fast engine. Uh, but yeah, it's all mechanical, no electronics whatsoever. If you have the correct um, handle, you can put it here. This is actually the end of the camshaft. You spin it, um, which way? I think it's counterclockwise. Spin it counterclockwise. Um, the timing gear behind it will then spin the crankshaft uh, clockwise. And that will let you start it without using the starter motor. But guess what I don't have? Yeah, the handle. Well, but before you actually turn it, you have to fight the compression. Uh, most people don't have the strength to do that. So there is a little set of levers back here. Where is it? Oh, here's one. Plop. Okay, so that's a decompression lever. It opens up the intake valve, holds it open. Um, so you can spin the engine without fighting compression and then when it's up to speed then you can uh, close the levers and the compression will start the engine or heat it up heat up the fuel and start the engine let's put things back here Come on. This is the back side of the um, depth and speed gauge, uh, of the tri data display. Um, it's got the wires for the depth sensor that's under the V berth, and the wires for the speed sensor, which is under the galley. Um, wires go down to this little junction box um, this is the cable from the display goes in there power for the network and the displays comes from here that will go to a um, breaker switch um, and it powers everything that that's connected on the network then the blue ones are uh, backbone cables one side of that 
goes through that loop to this side and behind the can of lithium grease is the actuator control unit for the autopilot. Uh, that is the box that actually sends power to the motor on the on the steering wheel drive but it's not the actual autopilot brains this just receives commands for go left or go right uh, and then here's the network cable for the uh, pop, the autopilot control head and we go back and to the other side uh, this is radio uh, well the VHF radio for communication uh, microphone with controls and you squeeze it and blah 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 putting it back on uh, besides uh, radio duties it also has uh, it also receives GPS data uh, um, so that I can use the distress call the button press it here and it will send a distress call and it will send the coordinates according to the GPS uh, also has what's called a AIS display if I have an AIS receiver or transceiver on the network uh, it can alert me for any vessels that are too close so I can dodge them or spook them depending stuff that also is connected to the network um, so the other side of the spur on the backbone I mean this map bone goes all the way back here that's a standard ah, come on ah there we go. sorry I'm gonna show you again oh forgot yeah come on so you pop and yeah, it's just like a car stereo uh, it's a JBL thing with CDs and uh, no slot for an SD card or USB or something. And this is old, and uh, I don't know if it works. I haven't tried it. But, um, it goes to the speakers on the cockpit, which is the wrong place to put speakers, I think. But anyway, continuing. So the cable, network cable, goes underneath here and goes through that loop. And it connects to this thing, which is a chart plotter. Um, has a GPS receiver. And it sends the GPS data across the network to all of the devices. And also displays a map and a bunch of other fancy stuff. Uh, and then at the end of the network is this thing, which is a 9-axis... Um, um, uh, rate gyro, compass, and other sensor stuff. Um, and also, if this is the actual brains of the autopilot. Uh, so it uses those sensors plus the uh, speed data from the speed sensor. And optionally, uh, wind. If I had a wind uh, anemometer up on the mast it will use that uh, and uh, steer the boat using those data and then he uses the network to communicate to the autopilot control unit and to the uh, the control head um, the control head receives uh, data and sends commands to this this sends commands to the actuator uh, control unit, and the actuator control unit powers the uh, wheel drive motor one way or the other. Or the other. Yeah. So other stuff. So here, this is supposed to be the quarter berth next to the companionway. 
should be able to fit a person in there if I didn't have this much crap here. Um, let's see, it's a... Uh, uh, you probably saw this already. It's things, one of the many things that I haven't installed. This box has two solar panels that I'm going to put on top of the, the cabin. Oh, I got a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, boxes and jerry cans in there. Oh, there's my grill. That's my grill. I need to put it on the um, on the railing um, next to the cockpit as soon as I feel like cooking. This is a light, LED light that I need to install. Sensing a theme here. Uh, the boat hook. Uh, oh, those plastic things, like this one, these are battens. These go on the sail and stiffen it. These are made from fiberglass and resin, and they're pretty damn stiff, but kind of flexible. Uh, okay, so this is the settee. This is another seat. Um, a backpack, um, bags, clo uh, clothes, um, a Towel, not a shirt. The computer showing crazy screensaver. Come on, don't go crazy. There you go, it's playing Pandora. All right, so that's the table. Uh, another uh, settee with more crap. That box there is for the spare wheel pilot. The one on the wheel right now is the original that came with the boat. Uh, this is the new one in here. So, but they're compatible. They're almost almost identical. Uh, so if I, if the old one uh, craps a bit, then I just pop it off and put the new one in and continue sailing. Uh, bags of emergency stuff. Uh, what are these? Uh, life vests. Yeah, life vests. Uh, back here, oh, the, uh, the old autopilot. Let me show you this antique. Yeah. So you saw the um, uh, the autopilot control unit. Oh, no, the, the control head earlier. So this is an old one. So uh, this goes, this connects to the um, the wheel drive um, and it gets yeah two wires for the wheel drive two wires for power uh, this goes to a rudder sensor this goes to uh, what does it say here CXA I am no oh oh yeah wind vane yeah because it has a wind vane mode so so for a wind anemometer and then, yeah, once, it, once it's powered, then you press auto, minus one, plus one, minus ten, plus ten, and standby just stops it. But, and it's got, that noise is the flux gate compass inside, which hangs and uh, sort of in a, in a gimbal, so it's kind of loose in there. All right, moving back. Um, so, going back, there is a hey, it's a bell. Stop. Um, a closet. And uh, hold on, Let's keep it open. Uh, I have a vacuum pump for changing the oil in the engine so, uh, hangers and uh, got yep close hooks stuff uh, okay and then here goes to the head uh, with the toilet uh, sink and uh, got the shower here window so you can look outside well 
taking a leak. Got the mirror here and a light. That doesn't work either. Uh, fun. But you can put a uh, uh, 120 volt light on that outlet. It will work as long as you're at the dock and hooked up. And, and then the V birth. Uh, so that's this the where I can spend the night. That's uh, uh, what do you call it? Sleeping bag. Yeah, it's a sleeping bag that I just opened up and laid down there. Uh, nice and cozy. Any fan for when it's hot. And the light. Because the regular lights are not working either. Uh, and those back there are the cushions for the uh, cockpit. So when it's time to go up, then I can take him up and it gets more comfortable in the, in the cockpit when steering and stuff. But yeah, so that's, that's a tour. Uh, so yeah, so this is what it looks like here. And do I have anything else? No, no, I don't. That's it.